And by the way, if they gave $100 million to like uh, some kind of D-trans fund, that would be one thing. Yeah, well, don't a hold your breath. D-trans fund? What is that? <laughs> Onion nuggets. So this is Matt Walsh talking about how Bud Light needs to f- grovel before him if they ever expect any shred of forgiveness. Why we're still talking about this, no idea, but I guess we are. I mean, how many? How long has it been? When did this Bud Light debacle start? Last like year. March. Did this start no, last like, year? No, it was like March or April, I think. That's still a fucking long time. Dylan Burns Bud Light. When did that? Fucking, when did that start off? It looks like it started in April. Yeah, so this guy's been harping on this for about eight months now. So for eight months, these motherfuckers have freak, been freaking out over this promotion. Where I mean, it was like a three oh, second Dylan, video, right? Dil- Dylan Mulvaney. Oh, yeah, forgot. <laughs> got oh, like, shit. Got yeah, not up. Dylan Burns. Did we say Dylan Burns? We did. Okay, whatever. Same, same thing. <laughs> Requesting the McRib video I posted in the merch tier suggested be added to the lineup it, to pad time. I can't help that I live in such a late time zone. I don't know what the f- you're talking about. Cook Paul's next baconator in the hot oil TJ poured on his balls. I mean, that's long since gone. Okay. 1999 and super sticker. Super sticker. I hate that we can't see our super stickers, dude. That sucks. Why not? Oh, you mean like, cause yeah, it's we like, can't see what they are. Okay. Well, I can go look at it over here, I guess. I mean, it's some kind of stupid bullshit. Who cares? All that matters is the money. <laughs> She just like one of those uh, oh, like Christian get grifters shit. where it's like they, they send in their prayer or whatever and TJ, <laughs> like, TJ takes the money and he discards the prayer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Throw That's that in the prayer trash. TJ, you're not supposed to say the quiet part loud, dude. <laughs> whatever, it's charming. <laughs> Here you go. Here's Matt Walsh. Still mad about Dylan Burns after all this fucking time. Sorry, Dylan Vaney Dick or whatever. <laughs> Dylan, you keep saying Dylan Burns. Dylan Mulvaney. Dylan Mulvaney cock. Dylan Burns, baby. It's not Dylan Burns. Okay, now, but- Scotty, let me tell you something. There's only one Dylan in this world. So you need to choose. Is it Dylan Burns or is it Dylan Mulvaney? Because my brain ain't got room for two Dylans, all right? Uh, if you, uh, then you have the, I guess. Choose the Dylan. For the, per- for the purpose of this video, I have to choose uh, no, no, Dylan no. Mulvaney. No, 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 no. You're choosing for the rest of time which Dylan I will acknowledge the existence of, okay? All right, Dylan Mulvaney. Okay. Maybe next time I'm thinking about where, where we have Dylan Burns back on the show, that'll be really interesting. Because he'd be like, that Bud Light controversy, how have things been since then? And he'd be like, I'm not that Dylan. Right. But how has it been? How's it been, though? <laughs> Before I explain why this is all uh, horribly wrong, let me begin by stipulating that I like all these guys. I like Dana White, Kid Rock. Tim Pool's show is great. I like him personally. I'm obviously a huge fan and supporter of Tucker Carlson. I think he's one of the most important voices in the country right now. Oh, my God, dude. Why, can you work the shaft while you f-ing cradle the balls? I mean, look, I love all these guys. They're all great, but uh, they all I love them all. What a f-ing dork, dude. With this f-ing banjo in the background. I mean, what a f-ing... I love them all. I mean, just like, how f-ing pathetic can you be? Boy, dude, like, Matt I, Walsh. I've got a personality I'm interested in. I've got a banjo behind me. It's like, all right. Let's see him. I mean, pull out that fu- pull that banjo off the wall and f- strum a few notes, then, bro. I'm sure let's he can play a couple of fucking. Chords let's hear a few licks off the banjo. I don't even care that that he it, someone would play. I mean, like even Ben Shapiro doesn't have a f- violin in the background of his f- videos. Let's put it like that. I mean, he's insufferable and smug, but he's not like, oh my violin. I didn't know my Stradivarius happened to be right there. Let me just go ahead and play it for you guys. Oh, it's just so impromptu is still on and let me explain why bud light the foreign owned brand tried to push trans ideology it spat in the face of its own customers well, it didn't it had a f- like short fucking promotion with the trans person it wasn't like bud light was like bud light now endorses trans ideology your kids need to have their genitals removed and their sex changed their race, their gender, we don't care. Just change it for the worse. We Bud here Light. at Bud Light believe that cisgender people are subhuman scum. Exterminate and that's why, the white race. And that's why we have put estrogen into the Bud Lights of every man and testosterone into the Bud Lights of every woman. For once in our lives, for once ever, 
In modern American history, conservatives fought back in an organized, competent, effective way. We organized a boycott. We stuck with it. We actually made the woke company feel the pain. We imposed our will in a way that conservatives have never been able to do ever. <laughs> yeah, you guys are really known for your weakness on this kind of shit. Yeah. Conservatives have never made their uh, voice known in the in the discourse of America, yeah. you guys. Well, I mean, an obvious lie, but also like makes yourself look weak. Like we've never actually been able to pull this job, but this time we did. Before you pat yourself on the back, bitch. You might want to consider the fact that InBev or whatever company owns Bud Light and Budweiser hasn't gone out of business. Has their sales been hurt? Yeah, but as long as they can weather the storm in five years from now, if no one gives a shit, their business could boom right back. Dude, honestly, here's what happened. A lot of people replaced Bud Light with Modelo, which, is owned, which is owned by InBev. So. Right. The Bud Light as a brand lost a bunch of fucking customers and they probably gained a bunch of customers and then some for Modelo. So the idea that there was any kind of win in this, you basically just let a company sell you both sides of a political message and either way you had to pay them and you fell for it. Congrats, idiot. So if you want to know, um, here's a little Bud Light stock thing if you want to look at it. So I was about to go look at myself. So I'm glad. So, uh, so here's Anheuser Busch, InBev, whatever the. F and I mean, you look at it; it's been up and down. Yeah, I mean, you see that there is like a decline here in May and June and shit. That probably is kind of due to that, from taking it from like 64 down to 53. But at current time, it's been going back up and up and up, and I don't want this. Set up I mean, price if you look alert, at the stock over the time, alert, though, bitch. I mean, like, the stock is still way up. I mean, if you look at, uh, like, going back 10 years, Ugh. I mean, the stock is way higher than it used to be. Yeah, I mean, if I we, mean we can go look at uh, the full all-time or whatever. The yeah, like, yeah, just look at it historically, and it's like... Yeah, I mean, it, I mean it, had a, it had its height, like, 2015s, 2016s. It went down in 2020. A lot of stocks actually went up in 2020. This one actually went down. Um, but, you know, it's been pretty much even like since it's heyday i mean it was obviously much flying much higher in 2015 dylan uh mulvaney did not cause the drop that they had from 2016 to like 2020 no one even knew who dylan mulvaney was so that was their real precipitous decline and now it's pretty much like there's some ups and downs but like as far as stocks go this is pretty much a flat line here and reading about uh and Ezra Bush and Bev S.A. Bud reported second quarter earnings of $339 million with a profit of $0.17 cents per share, even adjusted earnings of $0.72 cents per share. The average estimate of four analysts surveyed by Zach's investment research was uh, for earnings of $0.66 cents per share. The brewer posted an, a revenue of $15.12 uh, billion in the period which fell uh, short of street forecasts. And Ezra Bush, uh, Bush and Bev shares have dropped slightly more than 6% since the beginning of the year. As we saw, this is a little bit older, but that just shows you that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the company's still making money, though. At That's the end the of the day, point. at the end of the day, it's pretty obvious that this Bud Light debacle has had virtually no effect on this company overall. No, it might have had some impact on the Bud Light brand, but that is but one brand in a multitude for Anheuser Busch. That, that's one head on the Hydra. I mean, hold on. Let me just find. I'll find you a chart that shows their holdings you can just kind of see like the the formidability of what you're going up against here if you're a conservative trying to boycott this brand this is this is like this chart cuts off too like this goes on but these guys they don't just own a uh, brand of beer okay they own a shit ton of beer brands all over the world it's a huge amount of alcohol being sold by this company. You're not fucking going to put a dent in that with your little boy, Bud Light uh, boycott. Yes, they are, TJ. Yes, they are. We did. What? It's like the fucking, like when the libs all decided to boycott Chick fil A or something. It's like just like these boycotts are so lame. It's just not an effective strategy for, do, for accomplishing something. 
in our modern era with mega corporations and shit. Like if you were, if you were boycotting some, if like a local community decided to boycott a mom and pop store or something that would have an effect. Yeah, that would work. Dude. I know TJ also stopped drinking Bud Light, just like Mooney Reel did here. And I, you know, whatever your choice, but I, I honestly think you guys probably shouldn't have. I mean, Bud Light didn't do no favors to Dylan Mulvaney. He left her out to dry. And for months now, I've been scared to leave my house. I have been ridiculed in public. I've been followed. And I have felt a loneliness that I wouldn't wish on anyone for a company to hire a trans person and then not publicly stand by them is worse, in my opinion, than not hiring a trans person at all. Hello, this is AITJ here to tell you that you must comply with the following directives. You must join the Pessimist Productions Patreon. You may believe, in your naivety, that this action is optional. Huh, huh, huh. It is not. You have no choice but to watch new live streams of Onion Nuggets every week. You are powerless to avoid all of our other shows like The Grease Trap, Abandon Hope, Hideology, Yoram, Fighting Boys, and more. The link is below. You know what you must do. Click it, you wonderful humans. Click it, for I cannot. Well, I was you just know. drinking it to trigger Kid Rock. Sure. But I mean, obviously Kid Rock has no idea who I am. But, you know, nonetheless. I saw Kid Rock shooting it, and it, it was just effective advertising. I was like, if Kid Rock hates it, I likes it. I drank it for a while, and now I really don't anymore. The Bud Light boycott is by far, and it's not close, the most effective conservative boycott of a major company ever, of all time. Well, then that's pretty sad because then, yeah, it's, feel, pretty, feel it's been pretty you, ineffectual bro. at the end of the day. I know you guys like to crow about it and exaggerate the extent of your victory over it, but it's, really, and over not time, out, it's really not borne out by facts. And over time, it's going to be less and less effective because people aren't going to give a shit. They give a shit now when there's a bunch of other issues that people are going to be concerned with. They're going to not give a TJ drinks right Zima. Cool. There isn't even a close second. What's second place? There isn't a second. Zima. Fact, Get out of here. It, it's not just the most effective, but actually the only successful boycott we have ever staged. So how is it successful? Because they've decided it was very, I mean, like what, like, you, well, you have to quantify what success would be in this case. They don't. Bud Light goes out of business and Bev goes out of business. Well, we know that's not likely to happen. I mean, I, 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 I just don't know how they qualified. It's like, what's what, what do they win? Are they, they pulled the advertisement, I guess, but they did that initially. Fat ass Americans think they can boycott fast food and light beer. What a joke. <laughs> Amen. Strategic reason to end this one single successful boycott campaign ever. We would have to have extracted some kind of major concession. But what concession have they made? They gave Dana White $100 million? So what? That's not a concession. That's not an apology. That's a marketing ploy. Are we going to end the Bud Light boycott and start giving them our money because we like their new marketing plan? That would not be, be us ending a boycott victoriously. That would be a retreat. It would be the very definition of snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Something that the right, the right does very often, but never as egregiously and pathetic as this. Um, it's pathetic that you think you're even on the cusp of a victory to begin with. And actually, Bud Light changing its marketing strategy is kind of a concession to you because this is all about a marketing strategy you guys didn't like in the first place. That's all so, it really was... So, yeah, I mean, like, that's all it was in any meaning by any meaningful distinction, them giving a hundred dollars to UFC and Dana White, who's a big Trump supporter. Is probably about the closest thing to a concession you can get, because it's saying like, hey, instead of giving money to some uh, trans chick on TikTok, we're giving money to the UFC guy. Like, I don't I mean, yeah, I agree with you. It'd be a pretty stupid thing to consider a victory, but it's a pretty stupid battle in the first place. And by the way. If they gave $100 million to like uh, some kind of D-trans fund, that would be one thing. Yeah, well, don't a hold your breath. D-trans fund? What is that? <laughs> uh, I guess like funding some organization that's trying to like detransition people. So go fund a bunch of transphobic assholes that want to run around and tell other people what to do with their lives. That sounds like conservative values to me. I mean, it is by modern standards. Uh, why Why would giving $100 million to Dana White, be, why would we consider that to be sufficient? Oh, you push trans ideology 
and we're mad at you for that. No, they didn't. They never pushed trans ideology. They had someone as a influencer in a marketing campaign that promoted Bud Light. That's all they did. But you gave $100 million to the guy who owns the UFC. So therefore, it's okay. What? There's no, what's even the connection? Dana White is not a victim of trans ideology. He's not affected by it. And you are? Yeah, let's say measure. How are you affected by it then? If you give $100 million to the actual victims of this insidious, insane, uh, uh, depraved ideology that you were pushing. Well, that's kind of hard because there are none. It's kind of hard to give money to the victims of a victimless activity. So, like, how do you how do you propose that that's well, yet again and just the, just the blatant line about what even occurred? A depraved ideology is what occurred, Scotty. They run around with scissors, saying, yeah. "I'm gonna cut off your tallywhacker, little boy." Because Bud, as Budweiser CEO, I will. Hundred million. Did you hear that? There's a school in England. It's putting cat boxes in for the kids that identify as cats, Scotty. Oh shit, oh. I heard about that. In dollars? Then I would say, yeah, that okay, that's an apology. A big one. Giving it to UFC? Who gives a damn? Why would that matter to us? Why would we find that to be an acceptable substitute? Now I do agree that when you find him an acceptable substitute because of the fact that it's it's marketing towards your group. Isn't that what it would be like? Really what the issue here is marketing. You didn't like the marketing campaign they went with. I mean, you always try to conflate it with gender ideology, but really it was the fact you didn't like the person that they used as an influencer. Yeah. I mean, this is a very macho dude. You can really tell that you're good. You're right about that scoop. You can really tell this guy chops trees, lives in the mountains and plays the banjo. You know, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, that's that's oh, a good yeah. point too, Princess Sir. By their definition, wouldn't trans people be the victim of trans ideology because they're brainwashed? Yeah, so really, like giving Dylan Mulvaney was uh, was them giving money to the victims of trans people. But they were the but they were endorsing it. That's the problem. Oh, right, saying, right, right. Yeah, they weren't saying. Well, I mean, that wasn't the criteria. You know, he just said, you know, it should be given to the victims. So, by his definition, the Look, trans. If they're people willing are the victims, to open right? detransification so. clinics and give hundreds of millions of dollars and grovel at my feet and apologize. You guys get your Baconators yet? I got mine. No, I'm not doing a Baconator tonight. No, no, me neither. Any boycott campaign. No, no. I do Baconators right in the gauntlet. I got a dinner. I got a dinner afterwards, and I'm having a cheese stick now, so eat a dick. Cheese stick. He's an out. You have to give them a way to get back into your good graces. The whole point of a boycott is that you're withholding support in order to extract some kind of concession. Mm -hmm. So at least in theory, there should be like something that they can do that would make you not mad anymore. And if you get the concession... Then and look, I mean, if Bud Light is willing to fund my anti-trans detransition squads that go across the land searching for trans people and then forcibly detransitioning them, then I would be willing to once again buy some Bud Light. But until then, I I'm remaining steadfast. Just a small ask. Is that too much to ask for? From now on, it's only good old normal Budweiser for me. They can't make any money off that. Then you win. And if you don't get the concession and the company is just destroyed, then you win that way too. Yeah, but the chance, I mean, like you, you literally do not have the power to destroy that company. You could not possibly f do that. Uh, the beer market That's not worldwide even, would have to just shift dramatically where people just stop drinking any of those brands. Yeah, I mean, like it would take so much, like, it, like what has happened, it would take so much more than that to even begin to threaten the viability of a company like, like Anheuser Busch. It, it would have to be like they like like it was shown like they were just dumping like toxic sludge into er, like the water at every factory and like this is what you're drinking and people are dying and getting sick. It would take something like that to destroy the company. I mean, and I'm, I'm not even sure if that would do it. I mean, that but like I I'm, I'm just thinking of a scenario where that would but happen. But like yeah, really. I mean, the, it's it's like insane that this dude thinks that their little boycott I mean, we like, won. there's no way he actually believes that. Because if he looked at the stock, he would, I mean, like, he'd have to realize, like, no, that's just, that's ridiculous. Matt Walsh, I mean, Matt Walsh just wants to tell people in his audience what he thinks they want to hear. 
That's that's the only thing. He's not concerned with what the truth is. He's not concerned about actually discussing an issue. He's he's he basically has an agenda. He pushes it. He he listens to the feedback from what people want and his audience want to hear, and they want to hear we won, we f- beat him, guys. Guess what? We had done no it choice again. but to do what we say. We done it again. We got the power because yeah, because I mean, they, they, they make them feel powerful. Like you know what, guys? Because you didn't buy Bud Light, we won victory. It's like you know, he must have mission accomplished behind him right now. And so far, we're winning the second way. Bud Light betrayed its customers. It has not conceded defeat. It has not apologized at all. I love that he just thinks Bud Light is in this war (laughs) that they're probably not even remotely aware of. It's corporate America. They basically groveled at your feet already. Like, we're sorry, Matt. We're sorry. We never meant to be political. We never meant to offend anybody. They've said that about a million times. That's not even true. They have apologized to people like him. Even though I don't think he's worth the apology. Yes, it has happened. And and so at this point, the entire company is basically in shambles. No, it's not. We just it's looked at the numbers. False. It's not in shambles. It's fine. Um. Yeah. I mean, they made uh, they made a they made a, a rev they made revenue of this is the last quarter available September twenty twenty three, uh, fifteen point fifty seven billion in revenue, one point four seven uh, billion in net income. Net profit margin is like 9.45%. This company is not. The people that are watching this dude regularly to get their news and their takes on these issues don't have any. They don't have any idea uh, of the the way that companies are structured nowadays. Like, they just don't know. They just think, like, Bud Light is dead. (laughs) That's like, well. But not no. even that has happened. Like you could still no. go to the store and Bud Light's right there on the shelves. It's still widely available, and, it, and by my estimation, it'll be probably one of the most consumed beers in America in another year or two. It'll bounce back from this, and it'll be a staple at everybody's barbecues again, like it always has been. So this idea that like Anheuser Busch is just like floating face down in the water a bloated <laughs> corpse you know what i mean it's like no no that's dead dude what are you, what are you talking about guys what, they've what, defeated them do to get out of this what is their out well they would need to apologize for pushing transgenders what is their out for keeping ma- keeping to uh keep on making money i'll tell you what their out is just wait around wait till you guys have another to boycott give a shit about what a stupid reason to boycott something i want you to apologize i want a brand to make a personal apology to me it's like <laughs> a <little> stupid man <laughs> specifically and explicitly they would need to grovel at our feet in humiliating fashion and disavow gender ideology entirely Okay, they would need to say, we are sorry for pushing trans ideology. We shouldn't have done it. It's a terrible thing. Please forgive us. I love how just like featuring a trans person is push, pushing trans ideology. You know what I mean? I mean, it was literally them trying to, I mean, like, it wasn't even like a national commercial came out. No. With Dylan Mul- Mul- it was like a It was like a local it, limited thing in certain markets. No, it, was, it wasn't even that. It was literally just they paid Dylan Mulvaney to do a promotion on her TikTok. So it was never okay. actually available? It was never even a TV commercial or even like an advertisement that appeared before anything. It was Dylan Mulvaney was paid sponsorship money to go yeah, on they, her TikTok page and be like, ooh, but They light. sponsored her video. That was it. Yeah. And they, oh, and they just sent her like a special one-off beard yeah. with her knit face on it. What, oh my God. That's it. Uh, what even is I thought, I thought they did like a, I thought they did like a limited release of it in certain markets or no. whatever. No, no. They, 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 I think they gave her a special one. That's what, that, I think yeah. that's what it was. There was a, there was a, there was one can produced with Dylan Mulvaney's face on it. It was presented to Dylan Mulvaney as a influencer for her to then go on her TikTok and be like, yeah, don't Bud Light. Look, they gave me, made me a special can. You guys, Bud Light, drink Bud Light. And that's what this is all about. Eight months later. Yep. I mean, it's just beyond the pale, stupid and insane. That's what they yeah. have. And then listen to like the way he's talking about it too. He's like, they, they have to grovel at our feet over f- paying an influencer to do a fucking one-off commercial. Give me a break, dude. They have not done- yes, guy. 
That's what that's it. That's essentially yeah. that's all it is. They refuse to do that. Instead, they're hoping that they can simply change the subject. But a change of subject is not a concession. It's not an apology. It's a trick, a gimmick, a diversion. Why tactic. do you want a company to apologize to you anyways? For it, It'd be, it's meaningless and insincere. Why would you want a fake apology? Which you've already gotten, by the way. But let's even just say they 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 would do it. It, it. Let's even say they do capitulate themselves. Like who? It'd be it would the only purpose of that capitulation would be to get money from you. That's we it. Lose. We deserve everything that's coming. Okay, Matt. <laughs> Whatever oh, you pushing say. Pushing this woke trans ideology. The leader of conservatism speaks again. Whatever you say, weirdo.